My name is Rod Cates. I'm the Producing Artistic Director at the Ordway, and I started on February 1st of 2018, so about 15 months ago. My job is I'm responsible for what we call Broadway at the Ordway, which is a combination of touring shows and shows we produce right here. Okay. And what is the biggest change that you see yourself bringing to the Ordway? Um, so, hmm, um, I mean, I think I've been working in New York in sort of the Broadway community now for a lot of years, 35 or more. Uh, and so because so much of my career is there, a lot of people that I know and work with, um, I'm interested in bringing them here. Um, I mean, one of the things that I found when I, one of my the very first day on the job is I got to sit in on auditions for Mamma Mia, which is the first show I produced. And um, along with um, a colleague of mine from London and a colleague of mine from New York who were the director and choreographer. And all three of us were, for the first time, seeing the a actors in the Twin Cities. And I was immediately like knocked out, as were they, by the amount of talent that was there. And what occurred to me in that very moment is that I've been in New York all that time, and while I knew sort of Minneapolis-St. Paul was a big theater town, I didn't really know, no. And I thought, oh, you know, the more we, we sort of commingle and I bring some artists from New York and have some artists from the Twin Cities and have them work together, the more the whole world is gonna know about what's going on here in the Twin Cities. So that's one of my big things is that kind of, I want people, I want people to know about what, what's going on here and I want people uh, that are, what's going on here to be exposed to people that are working from other places. And with last year being your first season here, what would you say was the biggest impact on you of which performance? Um, oh, that's like asking me to choose my favorite <laughs> child, right? Um, I mean, the, you know, one of the things that I think is important, one of the things that, as I said to you, that's unique about Broadway at the Ordway is that it's, we're only one of the very few cities, if not the only city, that sort of in equal measures includes touring productions of shows that we present and shows we produce right here, which we call Ordway Originals. Uh, in the upcoming season, we have three of each. Um, so I think one of the things that I like about that is that you can offer an eclectic array of things. Um, I mean, I've been doing the theater ever since, I, you know, I was a little kid, and I like all different kinds of theater. I like, you know, classics, I like musicals, I like straight plays, comedies, farces, and I think a good, you know, just like a good meal needs to have a mixture of things on the plate. A good season has a variety of things. So that's not a way of dodging your question about what's my favorite, but, you know, hopefully what I'm doing are doing things that are different enough that they can't really be compared to each other because the experiences are so different. Yeah. Smokey um, Joe's is the first show of our 2019-2020 season, correct? Okay. But this season, which starts with Smokey Joe's Cafe, is the first season that I've programmed the entire okay. season. So when I say programmed or produced, again, because we do two different kinds of things, we're both, for touring productions, we're, go out, we're basically going out and we're buying it for a week. Whereas with a produced show, we're building it from scratch. Okay. Um, Smokey Joe's, I saw um, the original production back in the 90s in New York. It, it's um, Broadway's longest musical re review, and a review is um, like a regular musical, except it doesn't have the scenes in between, right? So uh, usually connected by some kind of theme. Uh, and then in this, this new production, they had gone in and made some changes to the actual, the way the show was constructed. Um, and I just loved it. I was really knocked out by it. I mean, I thought it was great to begin with, but I'm, I'm quite partial to this version. One of the unique things that they've done is they've returned the music to its sort of rock and roll roots, or actually more rhythm and blues roots. Um, so it, the music has a kind of, um, you know, there's, I don't know, there's an expression called drop butt. Have you ever heard that expression where you hear music and suddenly you can't help but go, oh, right, oh yeah, right. And that Smokey Joe's has a lot of that drop butt music. You know, you just can't help but groove with it. And the new way that they're treating the music, I think, is a really exciting adjustment that they made this time. And we have an amazing choreographer, this guy named okay. Joshua Burgas, who's was choreographed all the musical numbers on the television show Smash, which was about the Broadway business. Uh, is also an Emmy Award winning and won an Emmy for that. Um, he's also done shows on Broadway and been nominated for a Tony and just a great guy. He's so the choreography is really, really strong and exciting. And then that, in terms of who's the choreographer, that's already set with the show itself or did you help select? I mean, every, every that? yeah, it's a great question. Every show kind of behaves differently. So <clears throat> I knew this was the version of Smokey Joe's that I wanted to do and it's what Joshua created. So 
when I heard that the show was going to be closing off Broadway, I made an overture to the producers who happened to be my old bosses and said, hey, what are you doing with the physical production? And they're like, well, we can't keep it. I'm like, why don't you sell it to me? So once I had the set, then I reached out and said, hey, would you like to recreate your direction and choreography? And then we hired a local cast. So it's sort of a hybrid of, of what, it, it's the recreation of that New York production, but with a local acting company. I mean, the great thing about Smokey Joe's Cafe is it's, it's <clears throat> the songs are by Lieber and Stoller, who, um, you know, wrote so many famous songs. Um, Stand By Me, Yakety Yak, Hound Dog, um, I Am Woman. I mean, there's just, and really what's amazing when you listen to it is you can't believe that the two same people wrote all that music because it's all so different. So for, for the people in sort of my generation, um, that music is going to remind you of your, you know, your youth. Um, and for the current generation, even some contemporary artists are now starting to re-record or cover some of Lieber and Stoller's. And it's set in such a, with, with a young cast and in, with a kind of fresh take on the music. So I really think it's one of those things where, you know, if you're in your 20s, you should bring your grandparents. And if, you, if you're grandparents, you should bring people in your 20s or bring your kids. There's almost nobody that's not going to like it. The music is just incredibly appealing. Um, and it's a great opportunity to see a New York artist work with local actors in, a, in a, what I think is a really happy marriage. Okay. And then in terms of the cast, you said it's mostly local cast, but it's not entirely local there, cast? We have one person named uh, Shabay Brown who was in the broad, off-Broadway production. So it was terrific to have him because he'd worked with the people before. But everybody else is Twin Cities based, um, including some sort of favorites that have been here before, Ben Backen and um, Rajane uh, Katura, I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, uh, so there's a couple people there that people will recognize and also some, some fresh faces. Okay. One of the things you need to do as a producer is to really understand from the inside out what the director and choreographer want to do with the show so that as those decisions start to radiate out to other departments, the producer can help say to people, oh, no, no, this is really important and here's why. And the best way for me to learn that is to be in the room, watch the director work, see them coaching actors, see which actors they like, which actors they don't like, because in the process of that, I learn about um, about their take on the show. And it's also fun. I mean, there's nothing better to do than sit in a room and have actors sing, sing at you all day. That's a great way to spend your day. I'm, I think there's a, an incredibly talented acting pool here. One of the things that is unique about the Twin Cities is that not only does it, does it have a lot of theaters, it actually has enough theaters so that if you're an actor, you can make a living. Um, and that's an incredibly important distinction because lots of big cities have opportunities for actors, but not quite enough work. So they might have to have a second job. And if they have a second job, well then when rehearsals happen during the day, what, what do they do? They quit their job. So what's great about Minneapolis St. Paul is there's so much work that actors, you know, if uh, not that all actors work all the time, right? There's obviously only a limited number of opportunities, but you can make a living here. Um, <clears throat> so that's something that the two cities have in common. Um, you know, New York is the, you know, one of the theater capitals of the world. So the competition is intense, it's fierce. Uh, but um, I really think the talent pool here in the Twin Cities, um, you know, in some ways it's, it's impossible to distinguish what's a quote unquote New York actor and what's a local actor. It's something that I think um, audiences here should be really proud of is actually the, the level of talent. I would also say the musicians here are incredibly good. I mean, I go to, we have a thing with musicians where they do what's called an orchestra read. So it means it's the very first time they've sat in the room and played together. And I've walked into an orchestra read before and thought, this clearly has been rehearsed because they're already so tight. So the level of musicianship in the Twin Cities, I think, is also something to be um, really proud of. And, you know, we have all the other craftsmen, too, designers and technicians, and um, there's a very, very high level of activity here, so it's great. So why should other people come to Minnesota just to see a show? Well, I think one of the things that, uh, two things I guess I would say that about the Ordway is that, you know, we sort of have an expression now that we use as a litmus test about when we're thinking about shows, and it needs to be only at the Ordway. So I'm interested in presenting and producing shows that have something unique about it that audiences Will, that they can't see anywhere else, certainly not in the Twin Cities, maybe not in the region, and maybe not even in the country or the world. So I want those experiences to be unique. Um, so we will be doing versions of shows or there'll be some take or something unique. So for example, let me tell you about Smokey Joe's. So Smokey Joe's was done off-Broadway. They are now planning a tour for next season. 
to Ordway because I bought the set and got quick and quickly negotiated a deal with Josh as the director and choreographer and the designers. The Ordway is the only city in America that's presenting this version of Smokey Joe's Cafe this season. So it went directly from New York to here and next season lots of cities will get it. So that to me, it's exact, it's, it, to answer your question, that's exactly what I want. I want our audiences to have, you know, that you can only have that experience at the Ordway. The flip side of it is too that I want to develop work here that then goes on and has a future. Um, we are producing six um, here starting in November and December. Uh, and after after it's produced here at the Ordway, it's going to be produced on Broadway. So that's the first time in the Ordway's history that a show has gone directly from the Ordway to Broadway. And those are just two examples. You can see that's a two-way street, right? We've got New York coming to us and us going to New York. And, and I think those are the things that I want to do. Um, there are lots of great theater companies creating theater with Minneapolis, I mean with uh, Twin Cities artists. Um, and I want to do that, and I also want to bring this sort of New York, this dialogue with New York and with the rest of the country. And so, in terms of, again, the Twin Cities being this part of your career, given all that you've done, what made you want to come here? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think I had for a long time, I had run a theater company called the Helen Hayes Theater Company, which was in Nyack, New York, about 35 minutes outside the city. It was a Lort Theater. Um, back in the, like around the turn of the century. It sounds funny to say that. Um, and I loved it because I got to direct a little, I got to produce a little, we presented some shows, but the best part of it was, it was like coming into work and it felt like home. Like what I love, one of my favorite things to do in this job is I love to walk out and see the audience and give a little curtain speech beforehand because the, it just feels like it's family, right? You're, it's the same theater, the same seats, the same space. In a lot of cases, audience members that are coming back for the second time. And what's great about that, as opposed to all the other shows that I've done, is those other shows were mostly commercial. And so that those shows would have it their own run, but then that was gone. When that show was over, the whole, it just sort of evaporated. What's nice about a theater like the Ordway is that even if a show closes, the Ordway is still here and my audience is still here. Uh, and so I feel like it's great to feel like I'm, I'm sort of part of that family. Okay, and when you first started here, um, Ordway CEO President um, Jamie Grant, say his name correctly, said you would develop new work that will advance diversity and inclusion with the stories told on the Ordway stages and the artists who tell them. Um, so, how would you explain, you know, kind of what you're doing that that develops the diversity? So, in a way, Smokey Joe's, I don't know if the, the diversity means a lot of things. So, it could mean sure. in terms of ethnicity. It could just mean in terms of what you said, what your the collaboration with New York. So how would you explain that? I mean, I think certainly part of it, I think what Jamie was talking about, certainly part of that is a, uh, which is a overall part of the mission and fabric of the Ordway, is we, we, we have an expression that we've used, which is um, every story told, everyone feels welcome. And I think one of the things for me that I'm looking at are, it, it is not a secret that um, people, certain people of color, um, people with disabilities, women, um, LGBTQ people have been underrepresented in some ways in sort of mainstream Broadway shows, and luckily that's changing. Um, and the way to deal with that is in, there's a number of strategies um, to deal with that. Um, and by the way, I think it makes it really exciting. The fact that there's been kind of a limited pool of people um, that have been sort of had their either their stories told and also been the people in the driver's seat um, excludes all these points of view, right? And so I think, well, wait a minute, of course we're gonna, we want a lot, we want a variety of points of view. So it, to me, it just makes, it, it, you know, makes everything richer to be thinking about bringing those other stories in. And the strategies include doing stories that are written by people of color or people who are gay and lesbian um, or from groups that haven't been traditionally represented. And it also means taking a new approach. I mean, there's a thing, there's the phrases like colorblind casting, or I like the phrase color intentional casting, where you think about how do we be, how are we going to assert the retelling of stories in ways that looks more like America and less like uh, just a separate part of America. Um, so if you look at our current season, I think we have, uh, there's a fair amount of representation um, women, I mean, six is fantastic. It's 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 only there's only the only people on stage are women, <laughs> which is great. One of the uh, writers and directors is a woman. Um, 
So, uh, and, and also with um, Smoky Joe's Cafe, with 42nd Street that we just did, with Color Purple, Once on this Island, a lot of these stories are either from an African-American point of view or in the case of Once on this Island in Caribbean. Um, and you know, you hope to find work that can enrich all of that. Um, so that's, I don't know if that answered your question, but, um, and some of it too is you just, we can't, I mean, some of it is we're in a marketplace, right? So there's only so many shows I can get the rights to, to produce, and there's only so many, so many shows that will, can be, they're, they're on a route all over America that can, we can figure out how to get them to stop. So within those limited choices, I have to figure out how do I put a season together that balances it, that tells multiple stories from multiple points of view. So it's a little bit like a Rubik's Cube, you know, where you keep spinning it to try to get the right combination. And so what's maybe like a particular challenge do you see? So you have a lot of ideas that you're already implementing. And so if there's like a challenge looking three years out in terms of what you want to accomplish, what would that challenge be? I think for me, you know, it's almost interesting, the older you get, the more you realize that where strengths are, you follow strengths and there are also weaknesses. So I think one of the things about the Ordway that is one of its strengths is this beautiful facility. And the music theater is where we present, you know, most of our Broadway shows. And it's a, and it's a great theater and, and it's fantastic, but it's a big theater. And there are some shows that just won't work in that size room. And I really wish we had a, a smaller place where we could do work on a smaller scale before it was ready for so larger audiences. And this question and your question about diversity are tied together too. Um, that we can develop audiences and develop material and develop our artists and develop writers. Uh, and I would love to have smaller spaces or workshops or so that's certainly something I'm looking at for the, for the long term. Um, and you know, that's a challenge. We, we start to talk about real estate. Um, it's expensive, it's logistically, there's all kinds of issues with that. So uh, we're on the very early stages of that dialogue. But if I could just snap my fingers, I would okay. have a second theater. Okay, that's a five-year plan? That's a 10-year plan? I think that's probably a 10-year plan, okay. actually. Uh, but you never know, we might get lucky.